Welcome to A Course in Business Miracles. This is Heather Dominic, creator of businessmiracles.com and founder and leader of the highly sensitive entrepreneur movement. Join me today for some genuine practical assistance and a business altering and life changing experience. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles, episode 44 how to use core practices to create business consistency. Listen in as we go in depth to learn how crucial establishing core practices are for creating HSE financial success. Okay, beautiful. So where we want to first be looking at when it comes to commitment is core practice and core practices. So this is one of the primary elements within all of the business miracles, all the business miracles mentoring programs is the power of core practice. So first of all, what are we actually talking about when we're talking about core practice? So I always find that it's helpful when you're trying to get clear about what something is to be clear first about what it is not. So a core practice is not a habit. A core practice is not a ritual. Core practice is not inconsistent. So a core practice is the art of engaging consciously, and consciously being the key word, in chosen practices that activate a retraining of the mind. And I'll say that again. So a core practice is the art of engaging consciously chosen practices that activate a retraining of the mind. So a core practice supports you in being able to think differently And then, therefore, to be able to behave differently. So, for example, one of the tools that we use in Business Miracles to support that is the tool of the 30 day plan. And why the 30-day plan, particularly for HSEs, because everything that I was talking about yesterday is that the 30-day plan supports us in being able to stay out of our coping mechanisms when it comes to taking action within our business. And it supports us in staying out of our shadows when it comes to taking action in our business. So, for example, when you have a 30-day plan, it's understood that the intention is is that you're focusing on just those 30 days. So you don't have to get overwhelmed with how am I going to get to this big vision that I have. You're focusing on just 30 days. And then within the 30-day plan, there's the focus of just weekly. What are my weekly actions to support in staying out of that HSE shadow of overwhelm. And it's a tool to support consistency, which we'll be talking about later today as well, which is an area that HSEs really struggle with. So it is a core practice. This particular core practice is a monthly core practice, but that still means that it's consistent. 
unless you're in your HSE shadows and, you know, in the coping mechanism and getting all rebelly, right? And you're like, F that 30-day plan. <laughs> I'm not going to do that 30-day plan. You haven't seen me really get up in your face, 30-day plan. When really it's just designed to support you, right? So that is a core practice. So the 30-day plan, again, for example, that's not a habit, right? And it's not a ritual. It's a practice. You are practicing strengthening something that is not necessarily natural to you. Only because that most of us have been in our HSE shadows and coping mechanisms. But that doesn't mean that the 30-day plan is then suddenly approached from, okay, there we go, the 30-day plan, it's cerebral, and it's over there, and I have to do it, and I hate it, and I'm going to kick and scream on it, and I'm going to spit on it, and I'm going to do it, but then I'm going to forget about it, or any of those things. It can be connected to your HSE strengths. So I want you to take a moment and just connect in. Think about your day-to-day of your business and just make a list in your journal of what are the current core practices that you have in place in your business. And again, they have to meet just that definition that I gave you of core practice. Maybe you have one. Maybe you have 10. Maybe you have none. It doesn't matter. All that matters is you're taking this moment and you're connecting in and you're really consciously getting a sense of what core practices do I have in place or do I not have any core practices in place? It's anything that you have in place to activate the retraining of the mind in your business. So answering email is not a core practice. Checking Facebook is not a core practice, okay? And even the marketing that you might have in place is not necessarily a core practice unless part of that marketing is that it's supporting you in rethinking, right? And again, looking at things differently in your business, okay? The 30-day plan is a core practice. Another example of a core practice might be one of the energy management tools, right? So that you start each day with scripting, for example, could be another core practice. A core practice could be about organization systems. So especially if you're a person who tends to be disorganized. So maybe you start a core practice where you're filing your receipts every week. That could be a core practice. Looking at your numbers is a big one that comes up in the community a lot, right? To actually pay attention to your numbers. Checking your accounts every morning is a core practice. And especially if, you know, which I've, you know, mentored many of the community members on when it comes to looking at those numbers, if in the past you've looked at them and the superego voice has kicked in, and or so then then you go into avoiding them then the core practice becomes looking at the numbers and having a self kindness conversation in regards to those numbers is another example of a core practice so again the key part is that it's a consciously chosen so you're not just doing it unconsciously It's to activate a retraining of the mind to look at things differently in your business, to be different in your business, and it's done consistently. So, like, again, if we take just the numbers, like, you know, connecting with your numbers once a year, that's not a core practice. That's taxes are due, right? So we'll just take a few minutes and, again, just connecting in what's happening in your business on a day-to-day and what core practices do you have in place. There is no magic number and there's no right or wrong and you don't get sent to core practice jail if you just, you know, have one or none. So where we left off was all about core practice and just the importance of developing and implementing those core practices. 
And again, just a reminder that a core practice is not a habit and it's not a ritual. It's a practice that you are consciously choosing to put in place to support you in activating a retraining of the mind, something that will support you in being able to see your business differently and approach your business differently, and particularly any area that you are experiencing resistance in. So why do we do this? Well, similar to what I was saying yesterday about challenges, is your resistance and your challenges are directly connected together. And your resistance is exactly where you want to give attention to. It's exactly what's going to lead you to the next level of your business. And isn't that interesting? Since it's exactly what we're investing so much energy in avoiding. And then we wonder why we feel stuck. So it's really, really important that we are developing these core practices to support us in that process, right? It's it's not just the mind. It's not just the mind that creates change. There's an entire process. The, the process of transformation is what I refer to as Ayuk, right? Ayuk, which is stands for A and U and K. So A and U and K, A standing for awareness, that's that first phase of change and transformation. So we have to become aware of something first to even be able to possibly change it, right? If you're not aware of it, there's nothing to change. You're just blissfully moving along, answering email for 24 hours a day and not aware that that's not actually helping you bring in the clients that you desire to serve. So awareness is the first step. The second step is understanding. And then the third is knowing. So the fabulous physical movements that I came up to help myself remember this is that there's first, there's awareness, right? So it's like, it's really like it's outside of you, but it's, you're just touching it. It's come into your sphere, if you will. So you have awareness and then the awareness moves into understanding, which tends to be just intellectual. And then it moves into knowing, which is when you embody it. So the thing about this process of transformation, Ayuk, is that awareness and then understanding, and this is where most people stop, right here. And this is what I was talking to you about yesterday when I said you do not need more information. You have so much information. I feel like I look at many of you and I can see it coming out of your ears, like little smoke, right? Right? And so we have awareness, and then we have understanding, and then we stop here, and we're like, why aren't things different? Look at all of these books on my shelf, right? Shouldn't this, you know, shouldn't things be different? And yet we haven't moved from understanding to knowing. And what is it that helps us to move from understanding to knowing? And there's two primary ingredients that help us move from understanding to knowing. The first ingredient is choice. The second ingredient is action. So let me talk a little bit more about that. So you have awareness, and then you start to work with it, and you start to understand it more. And then you need to make a choice that's connected to an action that helps you to experience it, to experience the understanding. And then you make another choice and you take another action. And you take, make another choice and you take another action. And you make another choice and you take another action. 
And it's like choice, action, choice, action, choice, action, choice, action, choice, action, choice, 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 check, 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 until then, because you have been in practice, you have been in process consistently, that then it has an opportunity, it being like the energy of the transformation has an opportunity to move into knowing. We use the tools that I talked about earlier, the ways that we do the work here in the Business Miracles community, energy management, self-assessment, self-inquiry, self-kindness statement, being in community. And then suddenly you have an hour where suddenly it's different or you have a moment, you have a time, and that's this process. And here's the thing that I've really learned from doing this work for over 30 years now. You ready? There's no shortcut. (laughs) There is no shortcut. There's no shortcut. I have tried every way myself. I've watched so many HSEs try I just see it over and over again, looking for the shortcut. Where is the shortcut? Where is the magic program? Where is the magic book? Where is the magic recording? Can't you do it for me? That's a really good one. (laughs) Right? And there just isn't. It's between here and here. And being willing to be in that process. And that's why, for those of you who've heard me say, the process is the goal. I had one person say to me, well, what happens when you get to knowing? And I said, great, that's fantastic, and that'll present the next thing to you. She was like, what? I mean, is you, it's, you're not done? And I was like, are you dead? She's like, no. And I'm like, well, then it's still going on, because <laughs> that's it. It's continuous. It's continuous. The second key is that in addition to that there's no shortcut is that when you accept that there's no shortcut and you're willing to be in that process of transformation consistently, that it actually just becomes easier and easier. And it happens faster and faster. And so then one thing just leads to the next. And then you really, truly do have the experience of like, my life is just not the same anymore. But it takes a whole bunch of willingness to, again, to just be in that process. So what do you think just really gets in the way between the understanding and the knowing for HSEs? Well, it's everything that we've been talking about. What'll take you out from here to here, an HSE shadow? What'll take you out from here to here, an HSE coping mechanism? What'll take you out from here to here, the superego voice? And then what do you do? What do you do when the superego voice takes you out from the process? What do you do when an HSE shadow takes you out from the process? What do you do when the HSE coping mechanism takes you out from the process? This is another key. You choose again. And that's why I always say everything is course correctable. Everything is course correctable. The issue is when we get taken out that we think that that's it and we believe that that's it and we disengage and we don't participate in the process and we don't, we make an unconscious choice. Or, again, a down, downward commitment, like I was talking about earlier. So because this is absolutely necessary for transformation to occur, and because we have to continue to choose over and over again, and because we have to continue to take action over and over again, That's where core practices support us. The core practices support us in not being taken out by the HSE shadow. 
and the core practices support us in not being taken out by the HSE coping mechanism. And the core practices support us in not being taken out by the superego voice. So then the ego mind goes, great, all I need is a core practice. That is the shortcut. Heather doesn't know what she's talking about. But there's another element to the core practice is that you actually have to do more than write it in your journal. And you actually have to do it more than once. You actually have to commit to doing it consistently because what wires together fires together. So being in core practice consistently is choice, action, choice, action, choice, action, choice, action, choice, action. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Course in Business Miracles. If you're ready to learn how to use your highly sensitive abilities to support you in being purposeful, profitable, and empowered rather than scattered, poor, and undervalued, take my free self quiz to find out if you are indeed a highly sensitive entrepreneur. And if you are, along with your quiz results, you'll receive my free HSE success guide, which will teach you how to have your highly sensitive abilities working for you to create the results you desire in your business. Take the quiz and receive your free success guide now at www.hsequiz.com.